Okay, guys, we'll get started because we're running a bit behind time. And I know you want to get out to lunch on time. So welcome everyone to this parallel session, which is Make Some Noise with Social Media. And I'd like to welcome Ronan Lynch from IT Carlo. Ronan has worked in a number of academic libraries, including DIT and UCD, and he's currently a liaison librarian to the School of Engineering at IT Carlo. And he's going to talk to us today about using social media in an academic library context. Dave Galer, good market, Alicia. Um, so, my name is Ron Lynch, and uh, I'm going to talk about libraries, academic libraries, and social media. So, I should begin, I suppose, by telling you how this uh, presentation came about. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, social media is everywhere, especially for libraries. In our program for the last two days, I've seen uh, social media. Everyone's talk has nearly mentioned social media. This is good for social media, really good for social media, etc. So, I was. Um, at my desk and I was wondering, you know, uh, I had a load of questions and I really wanted, you know, to find out, like, why are we doing it? Uh, I started looking at, at different libraries and how libraries were, were doing social media and I found, like, you know, some of them were really, really serious, some of them were just a whole list of announcements and then, uh, then you had the other extreme, uh, like, super comedians at work and uh, so I, like, I was there, what's the best practice? Um, what are the le lessons I can learn? So today um, I have, uh, I did a whole lot of reading and I kind of sifted through and I said, right, I'll put the lessons I've learned together, the theory, and then I'll follow up with a bit of practice. So that's my plan here today, and make, uh, to see the, uh, the theory in action. So to begin with, uh, so, um, why, uh, why social media? Not everyone is convinced, you know, even though there is an absolute mountain of um, um, articles out there backing up uh, the reasons why we should be using social media in libraries. But it's not, um, not everyone is, is convinced and I have conversations ever since uh, I uh, showed my interest, I have conversations all the time. Because people focus on the output. They focus on, you know, um, that dress. You know, was it gold, uh, was it blue? You know, who really cares? Kim Kardashian, etc. breaking the internet. A dog that can talk, all right? So they focus on the outcomes. They focus on what they, they see as, uh, or the output as what they see as frivolous, nonsense, right? So, but then there, uh, you have all these uh, 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 professional articles out there saying, yes, there is a professional place for libraries, and libraries should be getting involved if they haven't already. So, in the, out of those um, uh, articles, uh, I was there like, what are the two main reasons for us to be doing this? If I had to convince my colleagues, say, why we should be doing it. And the two main reasons, really, uh, one is for on the, the user perspective. First of all, like, it seems like uh, social media gives us this new way, uh, well, it's not so new anymore, but new way of uh, going beyond the library walls. We've been hearing about the library boundaries for a long, long time. But the difference with social media is it allows us to go beyond the library boundaries and communicate with our users in the websites that they like and they're familiar with. We're not asking them to come to us anymore, and we're going to them. And the most important thing for libraries is a real selfish thing for libraries. And that for me is, it's a, one of the most simplest way, but absolutely huge impact way of promoting the library. That's like promoting the library um, internally, uh, with your uh, managers or the senior people, uh, the decision makers, it's like having an ear in their office uh, every day. Um, I'm not talking about uh, being hugely inventive here, I'm talking about being reporting on the normal day-to-day -day things we do in libraries that get forgotten about. Um, people say like, you know, how do I tell my, uh, the, my colleagues on campus, the heads of functions, like what we're doing here, etc. Um, you know, and uh, social media lets you do that. It, uh, it gives you that ear every day, the visits, uh, visitors you have, the stock taking you do, the weeding of your collection, the new material you're buying, etc., etc. All the little things, nothing spectacular here, but they're the little things, things, and it's a constant message over and over again. Uh, your library is doing stuff. Uh, your library is worth uh, investing in. So when it comes to the time where um, you know decisions have to be made of who's getting funding or who wants to do a new project, at least you have made your all along. Your library uh, has been heard. Um, okay. So amongst my questions, you know, I really want to know, um, okay, so if we're going to go uh, f 
uh, investing so much of our time and energy in social uh, media, etc. I want to know who was using it, like, you know. So this is uh, taken from January 2016 of a survey of 1,000 adults over the age of 15. So I see, uh, you see there that Facebook is uh, at around 63% of, of uh, using uh, uh, Facebook. And this has pretty much remained steady over the last few years. Uh, the last time I, um, I remember um, uh, Twitter is slowly growing and gaining pace. At, uh, the, one of the la uh, during the year, it moved from about 28 to 31. But they're, they're slowly uh, moving. And then you see Instagram is getting great growth. We find in our own campus that Instagram has switched as becoming one of the favorites with our students. Um, so again, it's something we need to uh, be focusing on. Um, so there is the impression that everybody is using it. Uh, that's the impression we have. And you know, everyone is using it, so get on board. Uh, you know, be creative and, and just get on, you know, get on with it. But then, you know, uh, being the other side of the coin, which uh, I, I had to find out about was, I started learning, yeah, everyone looks like they're using it, but they're not. And as you get older, uh, less and less people are uh, using it. So uh, with Facebook here, we have uh, that um, Facebook peaks at about the age of 35, right? So then you, you think like, you know, okay, um, you know, we have mature students on campus, etc. cetera. We, uh, your library might deal with an older uh, group of people again. So you need to kind of bear this in mind. And what the research I found uh, also uh, was saying that um, for academic faculty, that uh, the most likely people to not use uh, social media were in the age group of uh, from 40 plus, males, in fact, the 40 to 60 age group were most likely not to use social media. And I kind of saw this on the ground in Carlo because uh, um, as an engineering subject librarian, uh, my ideal target audience would be engineering staff, engineering students. But when I looked for social media outlets or, um, that they had, I couldn't find any. Especially I found out of 60 staff members, I couldn't find any social media uh, that they were using, especially in a professional uh, manner. I only found two in a um, kind of uh, two heads of functions, our heads of departments were using social media, but they were only using it as, I would kind of describe it like as a, a strategic use. Because you will find actually that if you're not on board with social media, you cannot participate. We've reached that level now that uh, what, is your social, or what is your Twitter account or whatever to log in? What's your Google account to log in? But uh, that's the point we've reached. But um, so for me, I had to think about those things um, and consider the age. I also was looking at where social media is used in the country. And again, um, you see uh, an infograph here of, of, uh, uh, produced by a, a social media marketing company called 8020.ie. Anyway, um, you see then like from uh, Dublin is saying, claiming that three out of four in their survey uh, of uh, people based in Dublin are using uh, Facebook. But then it drops dramatically, I think, to 50. And then when the area that concerns myself and Carlo is down to 43.9%. Again, there are large, uh, um, large sections of, of our society that are not using it. And we do have a presumption, and I know other speakers uh, 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 mentioned this in their talks about social media and technology, and uh, that not everyone uh, has the affordability. That's one reason, and not everyone has the technology uh, know-how. Like I'd also... Um, I uh, read an article recently in the Irish Times about um, uh, that the CSO uh, produced results that 49% uh, again of the over 60s have never been on the internet. Again, if, you're, uh, if you were focusing on an older group, if you were planning an event for the over 60s, I wouldn't be uh, advertising on social media and expecting a huge uh, turnout. So anyway, commitment. Like I say, not everybody, these are one of some of the lessons I've learned, right? And uh, Social media definitely needs commitment. It's a different type of project that uh, you, we have ever worked on before in Carlo. that in the past, if you did a little, uh, you did a presentation or you designed some little uh, program or whatever, you, 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 you did the production, the job was done, and then you could look at it and sit back. But um, social media is very different to that. Social media uh, is, uh, needs constant attention and care and watering. It needs growing uh, and maintenance. Otherwise, it just... Uh, 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 shrivels up really and loses momentum and loses therefore its impact. Um, like I said, there is a, a huge amount of research done uh, promoting the virtues, so it is 
definitely, most definitely a recognised uh, professional uh, tool for us in libraries. Uh, and now we live in an, an environment that, um, especially in, in our uh, focus in Carlo, uh, in the academic libraries at third level, that it is expected. And if you're not doing it, you're not really seen that, uh, considered being relevant anymore. And the, the comp uh, it is the whole idea that everybody is doing it, why aren't you, kind of thing. So we also found that you are being discussed, uh, even if you are not on social media yourself. So this, uh, when you join, at least you can take charge and uh, take charge of the conversation. Um, so uh, social media is supposed to be very easy to start, uh, but harder to maintain. And the best way to maintain it, we've uh, gone to literature, is that you form a plan. And most, uh, the best, uh, again, uh, is to form a social media team. Of course, if your library uh, has that, uh, those resources. Um, a social media team, the whole idea that is that social media is a, is a big thing um, um, for people to maintain all the time. It takes time. So therefore, the, if you um, share out the load, so to speak, uh, the job becomes much easier. Um, again, uh, in, your, in your library, not everyone might be convinced. Again, the decision makers uh, might be convinced. Uh, there was, a, uh, for some years in Carlo, uh, social media was blocked because, um, by our servers because it was considered uh, time wasting or also a uh, waste of energy. Our libraries were full with people just messing. That was the, the theory. Um, but we've overcome that in Carlo. And uh, again, so permissions and approval might be needed where you are and people might be, uh, need convincing. Again, because social media is uh, like considered a large workload there, um, again, uh, make life easier with a weekly or a monthly schedule. Uh, just to, so that uh, people aren't jumping from one thing to the, to the other. Um, some, sorry, no. One of the more interesting things I thought I found out was that um, not every library has a policy or, or even not every in, over um, institute, mother institute, whatever, has a social media policy. And there's two kind of theories regarding the policy. One, policy, um, having a policy, people believe, is um, very restrictive. You know, uh, we are on the internet, whatever, we're supposed to be creative and spontaneous. And if you have a policy um, that um, you won't allow for that. But however, you know, um, when the more I read about having a policy, the more I'm convinced that a uh, policy uh, for staff, staff members such as myself um, um, does a great deal. It, um, a policy typically, there's a lot of policy available out uh, on, on the internet, on websites, if you want to uh, read up on any, a lot of corporate policies out there as well. And they don't, uh, they're not huge documents. They might be only one page or two at the max. And typically they would uh, remind, uh, whoever is posting, etc., that they are an employee and that have that corporate responsibility in mind. So policies would typically look at the timing because um, uh, social media isn't really a nine to five thing. It, social media is 24 seven. So if you're operating nine to five, etc., you might want to consider uh, have, who will answer it, or at least in a policy it will be stated that you won't be answering uh, direct messages after five o'clock, etc. Um, uh, social media is, is uh, a lot of it is a conversation, so it's very important to realise the tone or uh, that is a conversational tone. Tone, and again, policy will can remind people of that. Uh, other things uh, you can see policy as well might be uh, to what is suitable content and what is not suitable. Again, uh, you can see fair enough that the corporate culture would be concerned over. Uh, leaving their librarians, uh, you know, being too creative, etc. So it all, it all has to be considered. And of course, then um, you might consider branding, etc., for your library to be very recognizable, uh, etc. Um, so it's all good having, uh, you know, your plan or good content if you really don't think about how you're going to implement your social media strategy. So uh, um, there's some do's and don'ts for you. And the basic uh, message of all, all the do's is make it as easy as possible for your, uh, the, the audience you're targeting. Because, uh, you know, uh, the more complicated it is, they can't find you. Um, so just make it as simple and always be clear and take ownership of what you're doing. Um, people need to trust their uh, librarians. Uh, we've, I've heard people mention trust in other talks, but it's no difference in social media. The trust has to, has, has to remain. Um, again, have a plan. 
uh, so that people um, don't feel pressured. It's one of the um, sort of anti-social media um, uh, concerns of librarians report in the literature that they feel like they're under pressure to be spontaneous, to be spectacular all the time. So having a plan, having a structure, having an editorial timetable is really useful because people, you can, um, like I say, share out the workload and people knowing their responsibilities and what they can do. And of course, uh, social media is social. It's all about creating relationships. It's all about being friendly. And um, otherwise, you won't have the impact uh, you want to make. The don'ts really are, the don'ts is don't lose face, really. Don't wind up um, uh, being drawn into negativity or associated. Don't pick a fight. Don't fight back, <laughs> definitely. And um, of course, don't uh, lose trust. Another one we found as well is not to rely on others. If you are um, part of um, a, a, a you know, smaller institute where they have their, um, their face, their social media, etc. And when it comes to can you, uh, reliability and can you rely on them to, um, to deliver the message you want to deliver. Uh, we've, when we started off, we hadn't our own um, accounts. We were working on the institute accounts. And our events could come and go before they'd reach the social media, before they'd be published for us. So again, we would say, don't rely on others. Do this yourself. Um, so one of the kind of the bigger conflicts I have myself with, with the whole thing in social media is that um, all the uh, literature uh, for libraries, um, for uh, private industry, etc., they all say, be fun, like it's really simple, you know, be fun, you know, be creative. So I, I've turned, as you can see, this is the how to be fun uh, slide, right? So jump on the bandwagon and have no shame. Uh, everyone is doing it. And you'll see in my... Uh, later on in practice that uh, the bandwagon uh, it works for a lot of people. So typical things, you know, on the bandwagon, jump on the bandwagon is, you know, what happened on this day in history, uh, a fun Friday fact, a good read. They're all things I'm sure you're all familiar with. But again, like, you know, these can be incorporated into, into your uh, weekly plan. So at least every day you could have one thing you know that can go out every day and somebody has been assigned that role, right? Again, um, um, Social media works better, more, uh, more visuals than images. Uh, people aren't all that interested in reading huge texts. They have other places to go for that, like uh, get a book off our shelf. Um, and other things you can uh, take advantage of are, um, if you're stuck for material, again, is like holidays, um, you know, Valentine's Day turns into Easter's, or Patrick's Day in between, etc. There's material there all the time. And again, that's one of the pressures that libra librarians have reported is that they felt that uh, they were constantly um, expected to be uh, inventive, but you don't. You know, those things can come to you as well in time. But anyway, so there's also, we're all part of a community, whether that is an academic research community, uh, whether that is like us in Carlo, we have our, uh, there's the college community, but then there's our greater um, um, Carlo town, etc., county area, uh, we're also part of that community as well. So we would celebrate uh, our community activities all the time again, and uh, that, ha that helps us with uh, uh, the conversation, keep the conversation going. And of course, you know, there are your achievements. Uh, that's, you sprinkle in your achievements because uh, that's, again, a huge reason for doing all this is to remind people that your uh, library is doing things, it is relevant, and, and it's worth, uh, it's, um, worth uh, keeping an eye on. Um, okay. And, and, oh, a great one as well, we find some strange, quirky things can wind up in lost and found. And again, a very simple idea, um, but uh, it keeps the conversation going. And that's all it, what it's all about. Keeps the communication going. It's not, a, a, again, a whole uh, um, publishing of opening hours, etc. It's all about a conversation. So, uh, in, on all these papers I was reading, there was all these different rules, and uh, they were... Uh, um, the people trying to convince you that they know the secret. And one of them uh, is this 80-20 uh, power law. And this, this, I've seen it used so many different times. It, or, uh, its origins are from Italy in the early 1900s. Uh, there was this uh, economist, per, uh, Pareto, pardon pronunciation, and he came up with the rule that 20% uh, of the uh, wealth of Italy is owned by, uh, uh, or 20% of the, 80% uh, of, sorry, 80% of the wealth is owned by 20% of the people. And within that 20%, you have the super rich, the one percenters. So this, this rule then has been, is used in so many different uh, 
different ways. And uh, again, uh, I've seen uh, the ways used with, with uh, social media. And the first of all is uh, the one percent, uh, the same rules here that 20% of uh, the creators, etc., uh, uh, in social media are causing 80% uh, uh, of the activity. For the likes of, we'll say, Ronaldo, etc., a soccer player, has 100 million uh, followers. So when he uh, tweets or whatever, sends a message, this has a huge ripple effect off to those 80% who retweet and retweet. Um, this, um, it's the same, some, uh, you know, Shakir or whatever takes a photograph of the World Cup and 3 million people like it. So these, uh, one, uh, these are the one percenters. I also learned that um, I always kind of expect the minority, less than 20%, to uh, participate. The whole, a lot of us follow and a lot of us look, but not many of us will like. And when you um, are producing your own social media, you might expect, oh, that should do very well, but it doesn't. But you have to remember that uh, at least five times the amount of people have looked at that, and they mightn't have liked it, but have looked at it, they, might, they, might, they still would have talked and discussed about it. And another way I've seen the 80-20 uh, the rule applied is um, regarding um, uh, producing um, the, your topics, really. Don't overburden your users, etc., with everything about your service. Lighten it up. And one of the, this, again, five times, etc., or 20% should be about your brand, about your library, about your services, but 80% uh, but should be other interesting content. And the other interesting content is kind of where the, uh, the challenge comes from, or comes from. So, yeah, again, another lesson is uh, you need to promote your social media, and you need to think about your distribution strategy, and one of the best ways with that is uh, to advertise your social media as in many places as you can with flyers, um, put your, your, uh, your email signatures, etc. Also, um, it is very useful for you to identify the one percenters in your community. Uh, who are the influencers of uh, the, uh, the people that you are, uh, are within your target audience as well? And follow them um, and learn from them. And try and make, uh, uh, create actually relationships with these one percenters. Um, that's uh, why I was looking uh, to the engineering faculty um, if I expected, you know, uh, engineering Carlo students uh, uh, Facebook page, but and I, uh, I had intended on uh, interaction with them, but it didn't it didn't exist not yet. But we're working on it. So always look at ways of building, maintaining, and nurturing uh, your social media. Um, so if you want to uh, realize how your social media is doing, uh, you need to review it. A uh, good way of that is measuring it. All the social media platforms uh, have uh, analytical software. You can also download other analytical software. And it's a very useful way of seeing uh, what is working, and particularly what patterns you uh, can identify. Because if you, if you identify a good time, a topic, event, etc., it's, um, well, there's no harm, again, in repeating it if, if something does work. You are learning of what uh, your users are interested in. Um, okay. So this way, uh, Le regarding the challenges, so our staff, our colleagues, us as librarians, we have varying skills and ability. Um, and we also um, mightn't uh, just have the enthusiasm for social media. So that as I, is one, like I say, one of the uh, reported uh, um, issues that uh, librarians have with social media. Also, it's a resource. Uh, I mentioned, you know, uh, earlier uh, about what's going to happen after five o'clock when the library is closed, or who is creating all this material, etc. It does take time. And again, if you are in a library, which um, a special library where I was once as the chief cook and bottle washer librarian, and now suddenly I have to devote my time to other resources, you know, creating these resources. Again, it is a strain. In the bigger libraries, they seem to have a luxury of people uh, being designated to these roles. But again, um, that it's, it's, it's people being used for something else uh, that, you know, it's other work they, they could be doing as, at the same time. There are ethical issues. Um, our, uh, one of the, our first speakers uh, mentioned that um, regarding privacy, but there's other issues as well. Uh, there's ownership of the material, who owns what. Uh, there is um, um, there's environmental about uh, issues about uh, using energy, etc. Um, so um, there, there is, there, it's not a, a plain, simple thing, just get on board and just do it. Uh, people do have co genuine concerns regarding social media. 
Um, of course, there's also the issue of uh, investing all our time in certain social media for then the, uh, to, the kind of the fear that what you're doing now is only going to become obsolete in a short while. And then there's a question of what is free. It's not, uh, it's not completely free in a way. Um, Facebook, Twitter, etc. these are huge advertising companies, you know, uh, billion, billion dollar a quarter turnover in revenue in, in advertising, etc. So we are participating in this as librarians, um, and again, so that is an issue for our people. Uh, we are, we are, you know, we are, it's not completely free. So my, one of my last points is um, the, um, at the very, um, one of my last points is, at all times really, uh, you need to re-examine what you're doing because you might actually even realise that the people involved in the social media are not the right people. So you need to re-examine all the points uh, as I've made with your team. Um, okay, so this is just a typical example of our, one of our own social media uh, uh, photos. Or actually, there's two separate uh, 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 tweets here from Twitter. And on, on, you see three gentlemen on the left. Uh, I don't know which way it's up here on the screen, but anyway... Um, these are three colleagues from our IT department, and during the Christmas time, we, uh, were, we changed 200 PCs in our library. This uh, is a huge investment for the library, and um, in the past, this would have gone unnoticed, pretty much unnoticed. A few people would have came back after the Christmas break and have noticed, and would have said, is that PC different or not? They are the same color, so not many would have. But when we posted this up on Twitter, you can, um, I don't know if you can see there, but uh, the it's very low numbers, like two likes or something like that, or two retweets, but we were using our analytical tour tools and we saw in the first 24 hours that a thousand people had seen that photo. And we were, very, we were delighted with this, like, you know, because um, uh, we could see the power laws in action there, even though it's not a, a multiple of five, it's a multiply, multiple of 500, but the, a thousand people had seen this. So a thousand people of our students, not just our students, it's, it's our, uh, it's the, it's the outer community, it's the future students. All these people had seen that. Uh, the library here uh, in Carlow is investing um, a large, a substantial investment of 200 new PCs in the service. But just to point out a big difference, um, the, the, the work was done over three to four days. And the second photograph is just, uh, you know, our open space with all the PCs lined up and they're all uh, up and ready for, uh, for action. But that, that photo was only uh, viewed 200 times. And it just uh, goes back to one of the lessons I, I was, I'd learned is that um, people in visuals um, work a lot better than just, um, just a whole bunch of PCs. Um, okay. the, I wanted to bring your attention to Orkney Library. Uh, Orkney Library is considered one of the uh, absolute uh, the best at uh, do, using social media, particularly Twitter. They use Twitter and Facebook. Um, they have, there's a huge amount of articles written about them, huge amount of, um, uh, especially actually uh, a huge amount of articles outside of libraries by general media about uh, Orkney libraries and what they're doing. So just, uh, they have 22,000 plus. Every time I look at this, it goes up about 1,000 people, a th roughly about 1,000 a month. They're growing their Twitter followers. They are followed by celebrities. They are followed by... Um, uh, the national newspapers like the BBC, radio stations, etc., in the UK. And I'm sure there could be a lot of people sitting here also, uh, followers. But uh, what I liked about uh, uh, Orkney Library was um, I was kind of not alone best practice, but I was trying comparing them to ourselves. In Carlow, we are about um, 40 years old, so we're kind of new enough in the whole library scheme. But we don't have a special collection of sort of national interest. We're not a national library, we're not uh, a national, uh, uh, we don't have manuscripts, etc. So, so some libraries already have that interest. So we feel like that we have to work a little bit harder. So Orkney Library um, has achieved this. They are a atypical public library uh, of the Orkney li uh, Islands in Scotland, uh, a very isolated area, uh, inha 20 inhabited islands. And um, they, um, um, again, are considered the best practice and the poster by here I, I have here is Stuart Bain and um, Stuart Bain you see at Stuart Bain is his Twitter account as well and uh, but he only has uh, not only but in a sense in comparative 385 uh, followers and that's just to demonstrate he even though he's considered the voice behind uh, uh, Orkney Library uh, Twitter 
um, uh, he, he, it just demonstrates that um, he, when he tweets himself, he, tweets, uh, he, he knows he, he is an individual. And when he tweets as Orkney Library, that uh, the, the, the Orkney Library uh, corporate uh, Twitter exists. And if you want to follow Stuart as an individual, you can. Um, some, um, they wanted three things from their social media, um, right? They wanted to uh, promote, promote the library. <laughs> I'm getting daggers here, time's up. I feel like I started late though, but anyway, it does, uh, I, I'll get through it, I'll get through it. Um, the, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, they wanted three things. They wanted to uh, pr promote the library, right? Okay, so I've already covered that. They want to inform their users of any changes, etc., in their services. But the third thing they said they wanted was to entertain. They reckoned uh, they were of the viewpoint that one and two uh, wouldn't really be effective unless they moved to entertain. And, and uh, they definitely are considered hugely entertaining, I, I guarantee you. But um, the... Uh, so... They, they have jumped on the bandwagon completely. You know, they do displays and typical things uh, of the week. And, but here you can just see what, they have a wicked sense of humor and that's how they're taking advantage here. Um, you hear uh, they jumping uh, on the bandwagon, particularly with uh, popular culture, culture, TV programs, Celebrity Big Brother, um, and, and uh, Downton Abbey, British Bake Off, etc. These are they're targeting their users. They know what their users are interested in, and they've asked their users. They ask them all the time, who should who should they follow, uh, who's worth following, and you, if uh, if uh, just go back, you can see like they're they're following. Uh, I think almost a thousand people. I can't read. Yeah, 986. But all along, they asked, who should we follow? And again, it's a case of uh, having the conversation and engaging with your with your audience and uh, finding out uh, what's important to them. They have library props. You see this is Wooden Woman, uh, is a library prop. And uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, screenshot there is of day 62. I've been watching Wooden Woman for the last two or three years. Um, and they constantly uh, do different things. You see a Halloween shot there as well. Uh, on, on the particular, on her hand there, she, uh, this was tweeted after uh, Cilla Black's son uh, had said that her, um, that Cilla Black, the day she died, was, uh, had watched a program of, uh, have enjoyed watching a pro program of Jeremy Kyle. And there you have in, in Cilla Black in a, in a, watching Jeremy Kyle. The, uh, so they never, um, you know, you say their comedy uh, or their entertainment can't, doesn't have to be hugely uh, sophisticated, if you know what I mean. You can just, it's a play on a pun, etc. This is at Christmas, one of their many tweets um, is, uh, uh, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire and a book on chess, a book on nuts and a book on roasting meat. This is their, uh, how they treat lost and found, you know. Uh, a photograph, of, again, a visual image, but, you know, the one on the, one on the left refer, reference to Frozen, the one on the right just listing three things. But again, these get uh, like retweeted like 50 times and huge amount of conversation, a huge amount of interaction, right? And, and what's, what's the, what's, fair enough, what's the outcome here? People have, uh, are constantly reminded of Orkney Library as a library service, you know? One of the unwritten rules of uh, the internet is put a cat in it, basically. Uh, and this uh, is just, um, will demonstrate, uh, this isn't in the library setting, this is from uh, one of, uh, the, the, uh, you know, what we say, a private cat. Um, so they're always thinking of opportunities of what will they use for, for their social media. Um, and, and, and cats are hugely, hugely popular. Um, again, they're using uh, book covers just for, uh, for a giggle. Um, you know, uh, this Canada book, time and time again, I see this, uh, they say, well, let's look at our funny book covers again, and maybe every once a month, they'll bring out this Canada book again, or for our fancy dress again. It's just, they repeat each other all time and time again. Uh, these are so, some more tweets. Uh, this is for Scotland and, and the World Cup, and uh, the, the one with all the six people, pers personalities in it. Like this one, they've, they targeted the BBC with this, and they do this all the time as well. They target celebrities, they target the influencers, the one percenters, and they say to like, the likes of this, uh, good luck Scotland. Then this was um, retweeted uh, in the stadium uh, um, while the match was going on. Again, exposing their service to a huge massive audience. Um, here is just uh, uh, you know, playing 
playing is all I'd say. Uh, a book on status quo, falling apart, can't maintain a status quo. Uh, uh, Mein Kampf, uh, and uh, uh, whether it's true or not is the other thing uh, that a, a 10 year old asked for a book on Minecraft. So again, uh, Downton Abbey, again, uh, exploiting what your users are, are interested in, and again, put a cat in it, and lo and behold, 50, 60 times it's retweeted, and the conversation, I've only just took a screenshot, the conversations behind these is there's hundreds of people involved. Again, all these people talking about uh, your library. You find a piece of moss, stick a googly eyes on it. Okay, so, right, uh, you know, again, hugely popular, and they get these creatures, and I see other libraries doing things. They might be picking moss off the roof, but they, 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 are, they have like, um, you know, library bag, um, our characters, etc., to associate with the library. The book on the Queen there, some people might have said, uh, uh, you know, um, might be appropriate, but again, uh, they've tested um, um, playing with uh, royal family books before. Uh, with this one here, again, uh, some looking for a book on wills and uh, uh, resulting in this. Hugely popular, hugely popular. So, what I'm trying to demonstrate here, like, you know, uh, some of them are really, really clever, fair enough, and this is one here. Uh, they did a 12 days of Christmas, right? And each day of Christmas, they made a joke with their book covers. But this, the first time they did this was 2014. And it was, um, you know, um, it was very memorable, but that didn't stop them in 2015, repeating the whole thing over 12 days again. And it got huge um, uh, amount of retweeting uh, again, uh, like, four, uh, like each day, the amount of traffic they got was unreal. Um, and this is their most, one of their most uh, popular, uh, uh, go to, you know, uh, go to, you know, don't national visit the library day as a member of White Snake. okay? Uh, I think there's a 1,300 times or something that retweeted. But when I think of this photo, and I also think of uh, the photo we put up of, uh, 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 that was viewed a thousand times, and I do wonder, like, how many thousand times this photo has been uh, looked at, and how many thousands of times have people thought about Orkney Library and its service. Uh, they are Library of the Year for 2015 in the UK, and I think this is a big contributor to that. They say that um, social me they can, what they can pinpoint that social media has done for them is in the year 08, 09, uh, when they started in 2009 with Twitter, they had um, 14,500 uh, uh, website visits. Last year they had 45,000. In, um, before they used uh, Twitter or whatever, library events, uh, a maximum of 20 people might turn up. Now uh, they sell out and they have a, a waiting list. Um, and uh, they, they just uh, the benefits, they uh, just uh, go on and on. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and thanks to Orkney Libraries. They gave me permission to use their slides today. Um, thanks very much for that. And there's some bibliography if, um, attached as well if you want to. To see that. Okay. Thank you. Ron. You're welcome. Okay, thank you to Ronan for that. Sorry for rushing you, but I know people want their lunch. I know I want my lunch. Um, we don't really have time for questions, but you can, I'm sure, ask Ronan questions over lunch just as he's about to eat something. Ask him a question. Thanks very much. We'll go to lunch now. And we have workshops after lunch in the parallel sessions. Thank you.